The world of Vaporwave is known for its post-9-11 anti-capitalist sentiment, marble statues, slowed down ambient vibes, and web culture. Atop of the great cascading musical waterfall sits amazing titans such as James Ferraro, Daniel Lopatan, Ryan De Roberts, and Ramona Xavier, all of whom have created these unique visions of musical nostalgia and a distorted view of the past. However, when there's discussions of Vaporwave, there's often one man missing. He deserves a mention and a place in the history of Vaporwave, even though he may have created the first ever piece of Vaporwave by accident. This is William Bazinski, a multi-instrumentalist who looks like a cross between Iggy Pop and Severus Snape. Mr. Bazinski has been producing music since the late 70s, and up until the turn of the century had released only two albums, both of them experimental ambient works. The first, Shortwave Music in 1998, and in 2000, Water Music. Both were self-released on his own label, and were recorded over a decade prior to release, but only received very little attention. Both albums feature experimentation through found sounds, tape loops, feedback, and all sorts of techniques now common in ambient and experimental music, as well as Vaporwave. William had been storing all of his music on magnetic reel-to-reel -reel tape for several years, and shortly after the release of Water Music, he began to look over the old tapes and thought about converting them digitally. What people don't know about magnetic tape is that over time, simply due to oxidization, the tape itself becomes loose and strips away from the original reels. Basinski himself recalls in 2004 of the original recordings that would later become the disintegration loops. I had recorded these bucolic pastoral tape loops off the Muzak station in the early 80s and slowed them down a couple speeds, but at the time they were too perfect perfect and finished for me to do anything with them. It was early 2001, and in his home studio space known as Arcadia, Basinski was shocked to find that a lot of the old tapes he'd collected over the years were deteriorating before his eyes, even before he began to feed them through the digital recorder. Basinski himself describes the old tapes chipping away like old paint on the reel-to-reel -reel loops. With only so much time left, he began to convert the loops to digital files, and to his surprise and dismay, the recordings sounded unlike anything he'd recorded years before. He began to play a counter melody on a mini Moog synthesizer, but after only 15 minutes of recording, he found something was wrong. He could see dust running up and down the tape path of his archiving device. He watched the recorder loop over and over again, and the tapes began to disintegrate, piece by piece, loop by loop, and tape by tape. Each time the loops would pass through the tape head during the archiving process, the music got slower and louder, and the reels themselves were becoming more and more worn. While initially shocked, Basinski began to listen to the recordings, and then feed the magnetic tape more and more until there was absolutely nothing left. The recordings began to literally fall off the tape during the conversion process from analog to digital. Basinski was actually working through the loops, and he began to treat the final recordings with added reverb and letting the cracks and gaps in the music play out even longer and longer in his final composition. Mr. Basinski was amazed at the transformation the work had gone through over the years, seemingly without ever playing a note or touching the tapes after their initial recording. He completed the archiving in August and spent the next month listening back to the pieces in full. It was September 10th, 2001. He was at his wit's end and decided he had finished what he would later call the disintegration loops in his Brooklyn apartment. He finished that night and in the morning awoke to two things on his door. An eviction notice and a knock from a close friend. The World Trade Centers had been struck. As the North Tower collapsed, his friend yelled out, Billy, it's going! And they went to the rooftop and saw all of his neighbors watching the New York skyline change in real time. No one knew what was going to happen next. Defeated and awestruck, Brzezinski went down to his apartment, he opened all the windows, got the recording of 1.1, hooked up his speakers, turned the volume all the way up, and played the disintegration loops as loud as he could to the streets below. He returned to the rooftop and sat in dismay and listened to his piece and waited. For what? No one was sure. Brzezinski himself stated that he played the loops during 9-11 as a soundtrack to the end of the world. He stated, here it is, Armageddon, the greatest show on earth, here we go. In fact, Basinski describes the piece of music as a perfect reflection of people's mindset on that day. He spoke with New York classical radio station WQXR in relation to the music in the day. We were all literally losing our minds in terror. Each person looping onto what holds him or her together, clinging to that which could provide some kind of release or explanation, just as each of the individual melodies in the disintegration loops did at their own pace. Seeming to hold onto that which made the melody unique while letting go of the unimport sustains or gently adding rests incrementally before the downbeat. In another interview with Fader on the 11th anniversary of 9-11, Bozinski says about the day, everyone went through their own loops of disintegration and despair. 
For a day marked with so much terror and horror, William Bozinski's The Disintegration Loops is a haunting yet beautiful reminder of the temporary nature of our own world. This is captured much more succinctly with the four albums Bozinski released from 2002 to 2003, and the four covers which show screen caps from the footage Bozinski took on that fateful day. He went up to his neighbor's penthouse, found an old videotape and put it into a video recorder, and his friends helped him out frame the shot and they just let the tape run out. He checked the video the next morning, and it was the last hour of daylight on a day the world would never forget. Reviewing the tape, he went back to his studio and synced Disintegration Loops 1.1 with it. Basinski describes it as just so moving. I knew it was an elegy. The loops themselves would become cult hits and would have the most positive reception to almost any ambient album of the 21st century. In 2004, all four albums were listed as number 30 on Pitchfork's top 50 albums in 2004, as well as almost a decade later, number 196 on the 200 greatest albums of the 2000s, and number three on the 50 greatest ambient albums of all time. Music website Tiny Mixtapes listed it as the 10th best album of the 2000s. I actually have a weird memory of hearing the disintegration loops for the first time when I visited New York last year. There's a small room in the 9-11 Memorial Museum with Bazinski's work playing on what I thought was just a loop, like genuinely thought it was an error or like there was just a problem with the speaker system and it was truly haunting. I, I felt genuinely upset as I heard this melody play over and over again and I looked at all of the pieces of history around me and I I felt like it was getting slower and I'm not sure if like my mind was playing tricks on me or something but as I went through the labyrinth that is that museum I found myself hearing it again but this time the sounds were breaking down and then the, the, somehow the music was disappearing from the loop it was it was so weird and in fact I didn't even identify the song until I started researching this video and I just put two and two together it just felt like someone had slowed down police sirens or like the whole world was coming to a stop which is how a lot of people felt on September 11th. Bozinski himself actually dedicated the albums to the victims of 9-11 and has become a prominent part of the art and history around the day. Now I listened to all four albums in total and they are a hard slog to say the least. Now I'm a huge fan of ambient music, in fact I originally fell in love with them while I was at university and I, I was listening to, I think for a whole semester, just to Boards of Canada and Brian Eno's Music for Airports which just helped me write and focus on my studies. And the way each album tears apart and wears itself out is just amazing. Like, it, it is genuinely heartbreaking to hear in some moments. And I, I know the albums are obviously tied to this tragic event, but even without it, it fills you with such nostalgia and melancholy, and, and, and it feels so weird to hear those cracks and, and breakups. Like, I, the, the worst slash best part is actually the last 10 minutes of a DP4 from Disintegration Loops 3. We can actually just make out just bits and pieces of the loop as the track crackles and just slowly falls apart. It actually reminded me of when I was younger and I, I listened to a Walkman and sometimes the, the, I would listen to the tapes too much or I would, I would drop them and there would be dust in them or I would have broken headphones and I would just hear all of the different ways the, the music would warp and it would, it would stick out in your mind. It would make you think of it so prominently. And it's almost how I feel about Vaporwave as well. Is, is It's those little loops, it's those weird melodic changes that make that music music what it is. So we fast forward to 2012 where Vaporwave is a brand new genre to most people and is huge and booming and just ready to be taken over by a web savvy group of music lovers and creators. And Vaporwave's qualities include like slowed down and chopped up loops, like an association with early web culture usually around about the time of 2001, like excessive amounts of reverb, a focus on the nostalgic past that we have around popular culture, and just often distorted amount of like ambient or instrumental pieces that creates a whole new experience for you. All of which honestly perfectly describes the disintegration loops. It's a piece of work that was originally recorded in 1982 and through digital means has just formed a new piece of art. It also has a greater deeper meaning that it creates a sense of longing like to look at the past and we can actually hear the same types of distorted nostalgia in the works of Macintosh Plus, Blank Banshee. And even one of the earliest Vaporwave albums, such as Chuck Pearson's Echo Jams. Oh, 
whether or not it was intentional, they owe a lot to Brzezinski's work. All of them show our relationship with time and music and the fleeting moments of enjoyment we have through that medium. I I'm not even sure if Brzezinski is aware of vaporwave as a genre or even cares or knows of his influence on ambient music, but I feel it's important to point out something like this. The amazing parallels between his work in 2001 to 2004 and these modern artists is undeniable. While some may find his work unlistenable or repetitive or just a little bit too avant-garde to truly be enjoyed, I think the disintegration loops is an integral part of musical history, not just for capturing the mood and tone of a day that so many of us have an extremely complicated relationship, but for unintentionally creating the techniques, signature sound, and loops that we all come to associate with Vaporwave and the movement that that music has become. I was actually genuinely fascinated that very few had written about this connection or even spoken about this, at least in video form. I actually, I want to give a huge shout out to at Logos Dedalius, whose tweet inspired me to make this into a full video. Go check him out on Twitter. I highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching this video, and I'd love to hear your opinion on William Bozinski's work and Vaporwave and how it all ties together. My name is Harrison Engstrom, and this is the accidental godfather of Vaporwave music.